Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another historical humans heritage and on today's episode all roads lead to Rome especially when it comes to one of the newest UNESCO world heritage sites on earth well yeah. not newest in terms of age but newest in terms of uh, inscription well, date yeah uh, we're covering a new inscription that occurred just this year and I think just this past month or so uh, with the uh, 60th uh, UNESCO Convention on World Heritage, uh, we are looking at the Via Appia, the uh, Appian Way, uh, all the way out in Italy. Yes. Yeah. So this is a this is a Roman road uh, that connects uh, southern Italy to uh, Rome itself, and um, it was. Uh, it was built and developed over the course of about 600 years. Wow. The earliest instance of the road uh, being uh, active would be in 312 BCE. And uh, the time in which they stop maintaining, growing, and expanding this road is, uh, is in the 4th century. So uh, I want to say that's end of the Severan dynasty, start of the Tetrarchy kind of thing for Rome. Uh, surprisingly Wait. maintained through the entirety of the 3rd century crisis, where you have more emperors than you have years. Yeah, the roads are what's important, but you can get yeah. rid of a leader like every 30 days, so long as the infrastructure is still good. And, yeah. and how far did these roads stretch? Well, the uh, part that has been inscribed, which is uh, the Via Appia, is 800 kilometers long. Um, it's the oldest of the great roads built by the Romans. Uh, the Romans used engineering as a tool of military expansion, consolidation, and economic growth. Uh, so they built roads everywhere. It's why the phrase all roads lead to Rome exists, and this was the first such road. I mean, it makes sense when you're talking about large-scale troop movements and just ease of traveling it's easy when you have a direct route somewhere and didn't have to yeah. take back roads the whole way yeah um very easy a uh, fun fact the via appia actually very famously um backfires on the romans um because <laughs> their enemies can march right down it uh actually yes because the via appia moves through southern uh italy southern italy uh for a good period of time uh especially during the first century bce um was how should we put this uh was sort of the slave center of the roman empire it was where all the gladiator schools were it was where all the uh you know it, it was this massive training ground for for slaves mm -hmm. and a man named spartacus would uh start a massive and very famous revolution down there and he would use these roads in his efforts to evade and surround the roman armies sent to capture him <laughs> How do you use it to evade them? Isn't there just, like, one direct route? Um, so what you would end up doing is um, it's it's not one direct route. It's designed to the Via Appia, uh, and its inscription is in 22 component parts because it's connecting 22 different locations to each other and thus to Rome. So it spreads out the, uh, it, it spreads out as you go south away from Rome. Uh, I believe once you get past Naples, it expands uh, eastward and goes down into the uh, heel of the boot. And how much of it uh, was so paved? All of it. All of it? It is a, it was a it. perfectly paved road. All Roman roads are paved. They are multi-layered paved roads. They are The original Roman surfaces are still good for driving with cars and trucks today. Uh, uh, it yeah, How don't long did sleep it take on Roman roads. Um, the Roman legions were very prolific at this, uh, so you could construct these in, uh, depending on the size you needed, a uh, matter of days to weeks. There's, there's um, a saying, or not really a saying, but essentially a lot of these roads were used mostly for the military to move in first. Essentially, if you saw a road appear in your territory that wasn't there before, it meant the Romans were on their way. Yeah, the, <laughs> so the, the road would precede the army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 
the Romans could build, uh, could literally construct a for a fully uh, a fortress capable of housing five thousand men in a few hours. They could construct a pontoon bridge in minutes, uh, and they would just construct roads behind them wherever they went, meaning that you are building these things at at least a mile a day behind your army. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, they, they're very prolific. And so Spartacus does use a lot of these roads to evade his captors, uh, largely because, one, the Romans are only using those roads, and two... He can use them just the same as them. You're coming to arrest him in one spot. He's going to take the road to go the long way around so that by the time you get to the spot you're trying to corner him in, he's behind you. And it's it's a slasher movie uh, logic kind of here. He just appears behind you. This also has to be one of the first like massive, massive public infrastructure projects. If yeah, free this, is, this is... Yeah, this is one of the largest uh, early infrastructure projects wow. in Italy. It's the first uh, of the great roads of the Roman Empire or, and or Republic, because uh, there's a Republic when it is first built. And uh, it gets the title uh, Regina Wearum, which means Queen of Roads, because it is the first and because it is so uh, magnificent. And uh, with a bit of the darker history, too, uh, with Spartacus, when the rebellion is put down... Uh, Spartacus's followers are all crucified along the entirety of the road. They nail so many people to crosses that this 800 kilometer road, every uh, like every kilometer of it has at least one man nailed to a cross as a warning uh, against insubordination. Yeah, Jeez. they they took that very serious. This was the lar like this is yeah the largest slave revolt that we know of. Yeah. And, that, and the is, part of it is literally yeah. the only reason we really know about it is because of the level of, of fear. cruelty shown. Yeah. Like, just the, like, one, the sheer audacity. Like, this is this is Rome's Vietnam, in a way, where the local superpower gets beaten a lot by... By an absolute nobody, essentially. Yeah. And... Yeah, th th this is so bad that um, it's Vietnam's Romans, not the best. But when 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 Romans when Romans faced rebellions, specifically slave rebellions, they did not acknowledge them, uh, and they certainly didn't grant military honors. When Crassus, who would later form part of the triumvirate, puts down the revolt of Spartacus on these roads, and he crucifies all of them on these roads, he is given what is called an ovation. Which is a which is the second highest military honor you can receive as a Roman officer, uh, in the city of Rome. Uh, he he, you know, it is second only to the triumph, which is only handed out on the conquest of a great and terrible foreign enemy, and because the enemy in this case is domestic, uh, the ovation is the highest award you can receive. Wow, this. Uh, this road it, was the yeah. showcase not only for that for like the whole rebellion it also carried Crassus like Crassus Pompey and Julius Caesar all the way to Rome yeah this is yeah it's yeah. seen everything that went on within this empire yeah I believe uh, I believe uh, Cicero the world's greatest statesman uh that is that is one of the titles he is given uh, by historians. He is executed on the side of this road by agents of Mark Antony for defaming Mark Antony in a series of speeches. Wow. Uh, Democratically, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He argues that Mark Antony is a tyrant. And so like a tyrant, you know, like a, like not a tyrant, but perfectly normal, sane man. Uh, he has him hunted down on his way to his vacation home and beheaded. Naturally. That's the only, that's the only reasonable because, response. Yes. Because an old man whose only weapon in his entire life has been giving speeches is clearly a threat. <laughs> but wow, so that's a cool site. You know, to figure it, that'd be a cool one for us to talk yeah. about with it being the most recent. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. It is one of the newest uh, sites, uh, which is unfortunately why the uh, dossier here on the UNESCO World Heritage site on the uh, on the online forum is uh, unfortunately. 
uh, rather sparse at the moment. They haven't had time to fully update and input all the information that we usually get to talk about with everybody here. Oh, but this was still cool. You guys gave a lot of cool stories and information. And yeah, I think that's a great point for us to wrap up here. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, let us know down below and we'll see you in the next one.